Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Space Snacks. These are bite-sized interviews with really interesting people, and today is no exception. I've got Shayla Redman, who is a reservist in the Air Force. Um, she's got a bachelor's in aerospace engineering and physics from Tuskegee. She's got a master's in uh, system engineering. She's eclectic like me and loves STEAM education. And so let's go and bring her on. Hi, Shayla. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> it's really great to have you on Space Snacks and to talk to you about your career mm -hmm. and your love of space and space exploration, but also of food. And so I love thank you for coming on. <laughs> thank you for having me. I love food and space. So that's easy to talk about. <laughs> Well, you know, one of the first questions I always ask people uh, when they come on the show is why space? What is it that got you into space? Well, um, and it's funny, a lot of people do ask this question. So I've always been an explorer. I love exploring. I love I, when I was younger, I wanted to dig up dinosaur bones in my backyard. And um, I was deterred. I, would, I love dinosaurs. And then I was like, well, most of the land has been discovered. So let me go deep in the ocean. So then marine biology was something I was fascinated with. And um, after that, I was like, no, I'll leave it to the people. There's so many people on earth. They're probably going to you know, look into that. And so as I got further into high school, and I've always been fascinated with stars since I was younger. I thought I wanted to be an astronomer, like that's to study stars, which I still love to study stars like on my own time, on my, ho on my own hobby time. I have like four telescopes in the house, two <laughs> one for me. I have one, my husband has one. My girls have their own, if you can see, yeah. My girls have their own telescope. So we, we love stars here. Um, but I, I was like, I just want to, I exploring and I want to know what's out there and um, see what, what, what can you do in an environment like that? So space is the ultimate exploration for me. So. You know, uh, you're, I'm, I have an explorer's heart also. And when you talk about your history of the dinosaurs and oceans and looking up at the stars, I feel, I feel like we're kindred spirits. Mm -hmm. and, and that's, and, and, and what's right, nice about that is that, you know, to being two black uh, females mm -hmm. and really into uh, the earth and space exploration and all of those things and mm -hmm. finding support in that. Yeah. And so, when you um did you happen to look at the uh there's a meteor shower did you and your family take part of that earlier in the week oh no probably just my schedule has been very um challenging hold on can you still see me because my screen just went out yeah we can still see you okay yes yeah, so i'll answer the question while i log back to the screen but yes no it's um We've been very, with everything going on, managing a schedule. My daughter's still, still doing school, but um, so I did not catch that. But anytime we do have a chance, I do try to like have the girls look up in the sky. I'm trying to teach them. I have a five-year-old and a two-year-old. So trying to, obviously the five-year-old is more receptive to understanding what's going on in the sky. And I can point to, you know, something to say, oh, that's the ISS or, oh, that's a planet or that's a satellite. But uh, my two-year-old is just, you know, she just watches and laughs. <laughs> no, it, it just to diverge for a minute. Were your parents into space and Earth exploration? No, my <laughs> parents were very. Uh, my dad, military, um, army. You know, retired. Uh -huh. My chief warrant officer. My mom also retired, army. Um, this very structured, uh, but they were very uh, educated. Both of them very educated. Encouraged me to. Ex to whatever it is I, I enjoyed or that I wanted to do, they were just very encouraging in that. So um, I know that when I say I want to go in space and I want to become an astronaut, um, my, my dad is excited. My mom is like, I don't know about that. <laughs> That's exactly <laughs> so, my parents. <laughs> yeah, so it, just, it just came. I just, I don't know. I've always had the, I want to adventure out and see, and I want to share it too. Like whatever I find, I want to share with the community. Because I also love teaching. That's like a pat. I love teaching, and I love exploring, and I want to share what I what I learn with humanity. So, okay, so you know, you're an explorer. So, which one is your top place to explore? The moon, 
Mars, Earth, International Space Station, low Earth orbit, uh, any of those places, the oceans. What's your you talking about? <laughs> um, I know you oh, only can choose one. I know multiple uh, people that have come on have said, oh, you can't just choose one. But if I had to choose one, it, was the, it would be the ISS. Uh, just because I, I love research and I love experiments. And because of the laboratory that is on the ISS, International Space Station, I would love to do uh, different types of research that uh, on there. Um, so that would, and then also whatever we find, you know, share with the community. So that is what I want to go first and then it's everywhere else. <laughs> and you're, you're an engineer. And yeah. so I imagine just even that the structure of the ISS is fascinating to some extent. Yes. Um, it's funny. So I'm a double major. Uh, I did focus on aerospace engineering and I, I do enjoy it. I kind of shifted over to, I, I also have a physics degree in, in my bachelor's in physics. Um, so physics is actually more of my passion uh, and I love aerospace, but physics is my passion. And that's where really I want to learn about energy. I want to study energy a bit more and under and study it in that environment of microgravity free fall, <laughs> free falling um, environment or in space because of the different elements that are out there. So I, I would definitely say I'm more of a physics, theoretical mechanics person. <laughs> you know, I love hearing that because if I were to go back to school and do it again, I think I would have tried to be a theoretical physicist too. Mm. And the reason why is because of energy and the electromagnetic spectrum. Yep. And, and I'm also fascinated with that. And so I have books on light and um, I just did a, a steam outreach activity for my sabbatical on solar energy oh, awesome. and looking at harnessing, you know, sunlight to create, convert it to energy and things like that. And so that, I think that's really cool. The physics component. Yeah. And so if you are going to be on the ISS, what are you eating? Cause this is about food. <laughs> Wouldn't you like to, what would you imagine having sitting floating in space on the ISS? What would you eat? Well, the, some people I know that have uh, logged in, they know me pretty well. And uh, um, I would, I love pizza. And <laughs> I know one of the uh, other things, the economists that I had included, if I could have ranch and my hot sauce with my pizza, <laughs> I'm good to go. I could eat pizza every day. But no, I, wait. <laughs> are you sure we're not related? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you know that. Because I'm feeling like we are related because pizza, my favorite food, whenever I travel around the world, I can eat it any place. I love ranch also. Um, so topping wise, do you have a, some favorite toppings? Are you a pepperoni person? Are you uh, veggies? So I was like, I don't know. I, I have a, I, it dep I will try any type of pizza toppings and then I, I kind of will go from there. So I, I'm a spicy type girl. So I like uh -huh. red pepper all over my pizza. Um, I like turkey pepperoni. I know that's like a taboo. People are like, it's not pepperoni, it's turkey. I like turkey pepperoni. I don't like the other pepperoni. So I will buy a, get a cheese pizza or order a cheese pizza and I will have my own turkey pepperoni and I will put it on pizza, heat it up with my, and I have my ranch on the side with some hot sauce. And that is what I, that's what I do. Cause I know they're the ISS. I think it was some Italian astronauts. They also, they had a video I think on YouTube where they were eating pizza. And so I was like, well then that's, there you go. I'm good. <laughs> they got pizza. I'm good. I can have my pizza. Can I have my hot sauce and ranch NASA or who, whatever organization, you know, will get me into I, the space. Can I have my pizza? <laughs> that's one of the things that I love to do too, is buy a frozen pizza and enhance it. I'm like, uh -huh. what do yeah. I want to add to make it my own original thing? And mm. so when you're on the ISS and you're having this fantastic pizza and who's eating it with you? Who would you bring on the ISS with you? Like the what uh is the like the one person to Yeah, if you could bring uh, one person with you, who would you want to bring? Okay, so I, I answered this question. It's and I'm a family oriented person. So I'm going to answer it. I will, I'm a family oriented person. So I always was like, Oh, I want to bring my family, my entire, not just my immediate family. I was like, I want my family to experience the joys of exploration as well. Um, I have a lot of families like, well, not going up there. You can go up there by yourself. But, <laughs> but, um, 
But really, I would I would love to have Dr. Mae Jemison because um, she's been up there before one, and I had the honor of meeting her at the international um, at the IAC uh, conference. And it was awesome. She, it, I caught her from the corner of my eye and I was a little struck. <laughs> I was like, hi. And but she calmed me down and um, I was able to kind of communicate about citizen science to her. And she's just an awesome person. And I just wanted to talk to her more and not just, she's been, she's done a lot of speaking engagements. So she's talked about, you know, science and, and being that the, um, being diverse in science and you kind of have to learn and bring it into the community. But also I want to ask her about more of the challenges that she, I know she probably went through um, that she doesn't talk too much about, but not, not just to, to have something to talk about, but just for my own personal experience. So I would love to bring her with me. <laughs> you know, I, uh, I also stalked her and I, <laughs> I <laughs> she was, she was eating and I was kind of hanging out on the side and waiting and waiting. I'm like, do people even know she's just right over there. And right. then finally she got up and started walking and I was like, hello. <laughs> I know I'm going to attack you. Can I meet you? Well, I, I think a lot of people don't realize is that there have only been, I think, six black female NASA astronauts right. and only half of them have flown. And right. so that's that's not the best success rate. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so when we're thinking about why is that and what are some of the challenges um, uh, for black females in space exploration and mm -hmm. how do we increase that? How do mm -hmm. we um, get more of us not only successfully going up and flying, but also just getting into the pipeline and and applying to be right an astronaut, astronaut, or be a part of the space uh, program in general, whether mm -hmm. you're on the ground or in space. I think uh, I, I'm an engineer. I notice obviously it's male dominated, and it is. I don't see a lot of. Like, I'm the only one. I was like five yeah. like, at work. <laughs> I'm a genius. I'm a genius. <laughs> it's just what it is. And, it is. Hopefully, we can change it as generations come. It's so true. You know, I'm a geoscientist, so geology is what I got my master's in, and there, there's not a lot of black females out there. You know, hiking the trails and um, right. doing that type of exploration, and that's why I like talking to you because we are both explorers, and I'm seeing a lot more uh, Af uh, women of color coming up into this them programs yeah. but just figuring out how you know how do we support them and and how do we keep breaking down those barriers that we've gone through one of the things that i'm passionate about is that there can be more than one of us right yeah, yeah. when we compete for spots like the astronaut program a lot of times it's like okay well we need one black female mm -hmm. uh, okay well what if you have five in the queue yeah, that are qualified you can choose right. more than one. You can choose right. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're right. And I and I am kind of going off of what you said. Um, I think it's about just communicating, getting into those communities that are not well that are predominantly, you know, women, women, men and women and men of color. Um, I think in communicating that th these are other aspects of it, the STEM or STEAM community that you can be a part of. Because uh, I do something with um, the Museum of Aviation in Georgia. And we, uh, like we used to have Young Astronauts Day every year. This year was supposed to be robotics, but because of everything, we were not able to do it. But still, Young Astronauts Day, sometimes I would have a different groups of people in there. And some of the young girls, the women of color, would be like, I don't know what that is. I don't want to do that. I'm like, well, why not? What do you not like about it? The math uh, scares people away. The um, some of the technical classes scare people away. But I don't. I just, I just, I'm like, why does that scare you? If this, let's let me see how I can make this more appealing to you, so you can see it, and then you can go yourself to try it. And I think that's like a big thing on how to get it get it more into that type of community so yeah you know i totally agree with that geology is often pictured as the lone person out in the middle of nowhere and if mm. you're part of the the you know black community you're used to community and having people with you and stuff and so right. 
and and as a geoscientist, I'm rarely alone in the middle of nowhere by myself. Mm -hmm. And so right. kind of breaking down these stereotypes that this is what it means to be a geologist. And um, because most of them, you know, these days are in a lab somewhere doing something yeah. with a team of people. <laughs> and <laughs> so I noticed that you're drinking something. What would you want to drink in space? Do you have a go-to drink? I and it's funny. So on, I put tea because I mainly drink tea because as of late, and not just because I'm pregnant, but and this is water because I'm trying to do better, I'm trying to do better with my life. But honestly, my go-to drink is uh, peppermint mocha with almond milk, still with whipped cream, extra peppermint. That is my drink. I drink that year round. It's all it's high in a, you know the holiday season, but I drink that is my drink. But peppermint um, so mocha. Pepper mocha, extra peppermint with almond milk. I love it. I, I drink a lot of peppermint tea. And so peppermint mocha good. in the holiday, yeah, the holiday season. I got my tea right now. I'm drinking a honey lavender stress reliever tea. Oh, oh good. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, not too bad. I can't complain. <laughs> but um you're uh, you're expecting your third child i am um and you know i'm ready to have his baby because trying to work <laughs> and still, cause i'm very active like last year you know i went to the conference you know i did the microgravity campaign with uh project possum at possum 13 uh, encouraging you know young women to be a part of the stem community and have their experiments flown in microgravity. That was awesome. It was really awesome because you know high school students could participate, uh, or their experiment could participate in microgravity. Um, that's my path. Like teaching and con connecting with the youth is is awesome. And I love connecting with adults, like uh, my peers and even older as well that are that don't know much about the science or space community. I just love communicating science science communication. That's what I, I like to do. Mm -hmm. um, so. I did a lot of that last year and this year, not just with everything going on, but just for me being pregnant, um, I have to slow down uh, a lot. So, but yeah. it's cool. So I'm about to have another girl. <laughs> and uh, and so it's definitely awesome. Uh, my husband's like, he's a girl dad, so we're happy. <laughs> and, you know, talking about the science communication and how important that is and, and being a role model too uh, in that role in, where do you see, uh, you know, you've got girls coming up, but you know, mm -hmm. three of the, your third one is about to be born and mm -hmm. how important it is for you to be out there and a voice, you know, not just for your kids, but for the kids mm -hmm. that you're influencing or trying to reach on a daily basis. Um, do, how did you find, what, do you feel like that that was a passion always in you or has it developed over time? I, so let's see, I started, I will say my parents have always, I've always been good at math. I'll say that because of that, I've, I've always helped my peers in their math courses. I was say since high school. When I got to college, I was tutoring people in math. Um, even I know that I, I, I recall one course, I had to take an electrical engineering course for engineers that weren't electrical engineers. Cause it, like they, let's go engineers take their own course. And we just learned like the basics. And a lot of it's math based when you understand how the circuit board works and understanding the, you know, the, the output and all that. Once I figured that out, a lot of people in my class didn't know what they were doing. So I would be tutoring them. And eventually I, I enjoyed that. I enjoyed helping mm -hmm. someone to understand something better. So I, I think it is something maybe that's always been with me and it just kind of progressed over time. And I just, I love sharing information and and seeing someone that don't doesn't think that they can accomplish something, and then I'm like, no, you can do it. And then I share the share, you know, something that they thought they, thought they could never accomplish, and they're excited about it. Even especially children, you know, they love, you know, robotics. I've done a robotics course in, um, like I said, at the Museum of Aviation, and you know, robotics and coding can be kind of crazy but depending on how you present it but when children really start picking it up they get excited about it they enjoy it and, and i love that feeling of a uh, give and take like oh i'm giving you this information and you're 
just you're enjoying and loving it. And you may go into something robotic, you may not, but you understand it. You, you can understand, you know, in a, in a, in a business or a community that, that has that. So I, I just, it's just a natural, I just love doing it. <laughs> oh, I could totally see you teaching from the ISS. So <laughs> that that's, not, that's the ultimate goal. <laughs> that's, that's, I can see that. And oh, I would love that. And so do you, um, do you like throwing space themed parties? Are you a, a party thrower in your house? So I ha have thrown like birthdays, mm -hmm. um, but I have not done a space theme and that is on my to-do list. Uh, <laughs> so I wanted to do a space theme um, photo shoot, <laughs> photo shoot, uh, pregnancy photo shoot. That's not gonna happen unless I do like a makeshift one in my house. I have a lot of space stuff in my house. I'm like, I could be creative, I'm pretty creative. I um, but um, I wanted to do that. And I think, oh, the only other thing, my wedding, uh, it was funny. I my, if. My husband didn't let reel me in. The whole wedding would have been a space theme. I would have had planets <laughs> from the ceiling. I would have been dark and showed stars. But what I was able to do, um, we had little name plates and we labeled the tables for people to sit at. And I was able to name them the different parts, you know, the solar system. So the sun and then the, the solar system and then different um, aspects of the um, galaxy. So that was what I was allowed to do. <laughs> Oh, I, it was awesome. It was awesome. So that sounds fantastic. And with the girls, I imagine you've got a lot of parties down the pipeline now that the third one's about to be born. I know. And, you know, I'm trying to get creative because we're not having all these parties that we come to my house. I don't want to go to many places. So I'm trying to get creative and hone on there. So we talked about steam. Mm -hmm. I love art. I love, like, I love fashion. I love makeup. I love being creative but I'm also very science oriented and I love combining the two. So my daughter went for her birthday when she turned five, I took, we did a paint and a, a, a paint thing for her friends. So I went somewhere and they learned how to paint because that's something that she's starting to really get into. Um, for my two year old, when she turned two, we went to the aquarium in Atlanta. Cause you know, just, so it's a learning, but they're having fun. And that's kind of what I, I want to continue that. I want them to experience Stuff. I don't. I'm not really big on presents. One, because we got we have a lot of stuff in the house. I need to clean the house and get and get their toys, you know, wrapped up and put somewhere else. So I want them to really experience life and experience different events on their special day. We'll have some parties sometimes, but I, I want to go take them places. So to a planetarium or, um, you know, we look at this, have a star party or you know, because we got telescopes, you know, invite friends over and we learn about the stars. So something like that. That is kind of where I am in the future for my my party planning. <laughs> I I love that. I you know the whole idea of experiences and and I started renaming instead of Saturday and Sunday. I have Adventure Saturday and <laughs> Creative Sunday. And so right. just getting my mindset in the fact that okay, let's do something that's more experiential and get out there and be creative and, right. and to learn. Um, are you are you a cook or a baker or a takeout person? <laughs> um, well, I I'm a cook naturally. I like to cook when I have time and the energy. I like to be creative in the kitchen. But we all kind of cook in our house, and my husband cooks as well. He's more of a survival cook. I'm a creative cook. <laughs> like he he's like, look, we have pasta, we have a meat, and we have a vegetable. Be good. I'm like, oh, well, let's see the seasoning. How will this taste? If I put this seasoning here, what happens if I leave this on longer at a lower temperature, or will, will it be more tender? Or you know, I, as I did try to bake, you know, I'm just gonna cut. I'm try again another time because <laughs> it didn't come out well. Uh, but uh, I do like to experiment in the kitchen. <laughs> So. The, do do the are the girls picky eaters or are they pretty experience? You know, like to experiment with their food. Are they? Yeah. Oh, let's see. Um, my oldest, she is, she is a pickier eater than my youngest. My youngest, she'll eat all the fruit that you can put in front of her. Vegetables is still a challenge. I mean, I I've gotten them to eat spinach as long as I put ranch on it. <laughs> love ranch. Ranch on everything in yeah, your food. Uh, but they will eat spinach, but cooked spinach is a challenge 
They will eat it because we make them, but they don't really like it. But other than that, they do pretty much have a, a, a variety, you know, of food that they like to eat. So I'll say that. And my five-year-old actually is wants to cook more. She wants to do more in the kitchen. So oh, that's great. That's fun. <laughs> yes. Yep. And so, uh, do you getting back to some more of your love of space? Mm -hmm. Do you have a favorite celestial object? Yes, um, it's called the Carina Nebula. And it is basically, it's just stardust and, and gases and it creates stars and stars, you know, are created and, and they live and die in, in that, um, just that particular, uh, the Carina Nebula. So I really love it because there's just so much going on and it's very artistic. It's something I would hang on my wall. <laughs> um, when I, my goal one day is to have a space room with just like space art and um, with the fun science factor uh, like with it. So I, I just love how it looks. I love what goes on. It's everything that is, is part of creation. It creates and, and um, when things are destroyed or stars die, uh, new things are created. And I just love that aspect of it. So I, that is my favorite. It, it's beautiful and we've got a picture of it up um, for people to see and I when you were mentioning space room and and space art I'm actually in my space room I, so I really have one when I got married and me and my husband moved to this new house I was like I need a space room <laughs> and uh, but I love what you just said about having space art um, something like this, um, you know, Hubble image, but also like a museum having the tag um, yeah. that explains what that is. So when you have people come over, uh, they can walk through, you know, your space room or your house and they can see these amazing images and art and learn something about it and learn yes. some of the science behind that. That's such a great idea. Yes. That, and that's what I hope to do with a lot of my uh, different pictures and, and uh, goals. So. And, um, and so when you're thinking about your future and some of the things that you want to do, where what's next for you? I know that you're still part of the Air Force and thank you for your service <laughs> um, and everything that you've contributed. And you're now in the, your Air Force Reserves you're um you love to teach and those things i know that you want to go to space and be an astronaut uh, but is there anything in the immediate future that you're thinking about as far as career wise as far as career wise just continue to be a part of the space um community i will say that you you know you have given you're like a great mentor <laughs> in my opinion um the aspect of um wherever I'm going to just stick with space and I will follow that no, whatever the path, however it lays out. Um, I will try to focus on space and exploring and um, getting the uh, research to help society. And however that, however that uh, comes about, I will go that path. I won't be so stuck on just one thing. Like I got to work with this company and that's it. Um, if, if it doesn't work out like that. Um, but I think I will focus on space. Uh, that's more long-term. Uh, and and the other thing is um, I do have a, it's a nonprofit called STEAM Unlimited. I just started, I want to say last year, and I had all these great ideas for this year, but of course <laughs> I can't do them right now, <laughs> but it's okay. We're in the planning phase and some of the art, it's not just the, so when I say art, I'll say, you know how, they'll have like a bottle spinning and a child will put a marker on top. And they're like, you're learning about um, forces, but the art is the pin on the bottle. And I'm like, oh, that's steam. I was like, no, 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 which is fine. But I want to I want to bring the art in a little more. Like I, I always describe it as the steam, the A in steam is the capital A versus the lowercase A. Uh, so that's the goal this year. We have a lot of planning to do as far as that part of it. And then of course, Project Possum, I'm, I'm very, very involved and want to continue to be involved in Project Possum and um, the education department that is in Project Possum that I work with, uh, developing that. And um, so those are the, those are the immediate 
immediate and I'll continue to do my engineering job and and grow the company that I'm with and with space and however it takes me, that's where I'm going to go. <laughs> oh, I love it. Uh, you're, it. You are such an inspiration and a teacher and anything that I can help in the future with your nonprofit, just let me know. Yes. Um, and I, I, I feel so fortunate to also be in Project Possum with you this year as an ambassador. And so we'll drop that um, link for you to follow Project Possum mm -hmm. in the chat um, afterwards. But thank you so much for coming on yeah. Space Snacks. It's been really great. It's been fun. Awesome. And everybody who's been listening in, thanks for tuning in for another episode. And we are going to have one tonight. Um, and so I'm really excited. I hope you'll tune in at, I think it's at seven o'clock tonight. Uh, thanks everyone. <laughs> I got to work on my ending, I think. No, you're doing good. You're doing good. <laughs> All right. Bye. Bye.